What is it guys, I'm not from Harvard University, but today we'll be talking about running shoes. Shut up computer. To understand running shoes a little better, it's important to understand the foot. So, there's three main types of arches, high, medium, and low. In a high arch, if you think about placing your foot in water and then making a footprint on like a cardboard, you notice that the arch part will not obviously make a mark on the cardboard and all your weight will be concentrated on the forefoot and the heel. And the high arch is considered to be quite rigid because the intrinsic and extrinsic muscles of your foot are holding up the arch whereas a low arch is considered to be a more flexible arch and yeah your muscles are a little bit weaker now i know in the past a high arch has been glorified but it's not always the best case scenario because a rigid foot means that there's a lot more impact because pronation which is when the foot rolls in is actually a shock absorbing mechanism that to an extent you do want to have a low arch isn't always the best either because you're not directing the force completely on your big toe joint you're actually going a little too much and that could lead to bunnings down the line low arches are also associated with like posterior tibialis pain and a bit of achilles tendonitis and stuff like that as well so in an ideal world you actually do want kind of a medium arch that doesn't over pronate quickly or under pronate as well because under pronation or supination is where the weight is all on the outside of the foot and you roll outwards on takeoff so in an ideal world you actually want a medium arch because that just is the sweet spot for most people a lot of the population is a medium arch it's more rare to find someone with a high arch it's a little more common to find someone with a flatter foot but a lot of this can be genetic as well so you don't want to change too much from what you started with and that's why running shoes come into play in this situation one final thing is that people with high arches tend to supinate and people with low arches tend to over pronate but this is only a correlation, it doesn't always mean that if you have a high arch you're going to supinate and if you have a low arch you're going to pronate. There is definitely some exceptions but it's a bit more rare to see it. Alright, now I want to preface this next clip by talking a bit about neutral stability shoes. A neutral shoe will allow your foot to flex and move how it wants without any guidance, whereas a stability shoe is going to hold up the arch and redirect the force to your big toe joint naturally. Your big toe joint is actually responsible for 80 to 85 percent of the stability of the foot so your little toes aren't really doing much and the big toe is doing most of the work here all right so now moving on to shoes people with a high arch will typically see more wear pattern on the outside of the foot because they are supinating they're rolling outwards and people with a low arch you're going to see a bit more of the wear pattern on the inside but a bit of pronation is good like I said earlier because you want to pronate to absorb the shock a little bit. So you want to have that little bit of rolling in in order to stop a ton of force going up the leg. So people with a high arch are actually more likely to get shin splints than people with a low arch. Which is actually very interesting because in the past people have glorified having a high arch. So what is the ideal wear pattern on a shoe? The ideal best case scenario would be to land on the outside of the foot and then to roll in a little bit but not too much. So having most of the wear pattern in the middle, but maybe slightly towards the inside. But not everyone can control that. But that's why if you over pronate and you have a lot of wear pattern on the inside and like completely nothing on the outside, then that's the scenario when you want to look into getting a stability shoe maybe to move that wear pattern a little bit towards the middle. Because a stability shoe, and this is not a stability shoe by the way, is going to push up the arch a little bit and then redirect the force to your big toe. Because in a neutral shoe, if you have a really low arch, you're gonna go like that a lot, and then the pressure here is gonna cause bindings and stuff that I was talking about earlier. But if you have a high arch and you supinate, that's when it gets a little bit tricky because there's not a shoe that pushes the outside of the arch in. But in that scenario, you wanna look for a shoe that has a bit of a wider base of support. Base is very wide in a New Balance shoe. And you also don't want any shoe that gives you any amount of arch support because you're already rolling out and if you have any more arch support, you're gonna really risk yourself from getting lateral ankle sprains. That's why someone with a high arch should never wear like an Asics Kano because you will literally sprain your lateral ankle and you're actually weaker on the outside of your ankle. So yeah, it's definitely not good. 
don't do it. All right, now we're gonna talk about drop of a shoe. So a drop of a shoe is literally referring to the difference of stack between the heel and the toe. In most shoes, you're gonna find that the heel is higher than the toe. Some shoes have a zero drop, which means the heel and the toe are the same height, but that is a bit more rare to find. Most shoes will have at least a bit of a higher heel than the toe. A high drop shoe, is going to shift the center of mass forward you're going to put more tension on the knee because of that because of where the center of mass is a low drop shoe is going to shift the center of mass backwards therefore you're going to put less tension on the knees but a bit more on the ankle we're going to quickly talk about how the drop of a shoe can affect where the load goes so in a lower drop shoe you're actually going to increase your cadence because it encourages you to take more steps and that takes the tension off the knee and moves it more towards the ankle and foot. Whereas if you're in a higher drop shoe, you're gonna take less steps, like slower steps, but then you're gonna put less load on the ankle and foot, but more load on the knee. So cadence can affect where the load goes, but you shouldn't really change it too much, but some shoes encourage a certain cadence. So lower drop will encourage more cadence, and a higher drop will encourage a lower cadence. That sounds confusing, but listen to it again if that didn't make sense. Stiffness of a shoe. So, when a shoe is more flexible, it's gonna keep the load within the foot and the ankle, whereas if a shoe is stiff and it doesn't bend, the whole shoe is gonna move as one unit without flexing, and that actually loads up the knee and the hip a lot more. So, if you have a ton of knee and hip issues, you're actually looking for a low drop shoe, preferably with a bit more cushioning though, but also a shoe that is a bit more flexible so that you don't load up the hip. So any shoe with a carbon plate or like a really, really high stack that doesn't flex, that's gonna load up the knee and hip a lot more. A high drop shoe is gonna take tension off the calf and the Achilles. So if you have like tight calves or Achilles issues, then you definitely wanna go for a higher drop. Cushioning, a lot of people think that a lot of it is really good and not enough of it is bad, but it's definitely not as simple as that. The more cushion the shoe is, sometimes you subconsciously get lazy and you land a little stiffer. Whereas if you're in a firmer shoe, you might even land a little softer, flex at all the joints and you subconsciously know that there's not much cushioning, so your body kind of takes care of itself. I think the best thing that you can do is if you're in a really cushioned shoe, make sure you tell yourself that it's not actually that cushioned, so that you still land quite soft and you don't increase the amount of force and impact on your knees. The correct running shoe fit. You want to be secure in the heel, you want to be locked down in the midfoot, you want wiggle room in the toes, and you want a thumbs width of space at the end of the shoe. I'm personally known for fitting people quite big in a shoe, but you definitely want that thumbs width of space because your foot is going to swell throughout the day. If you're standing for the whole day, your foot's going to get bigger. If you're running, you're putting seven times your body weight on one foot for most people and that's gonna definitely make your foot expand over time. Therefore, you definitely want a thumbs with the space at the end and don't try and compromise that or anything like that because if a shoe's working well for you, then the laces are gonna lock you to the back of the shoe and it's not gonna matter if there's space at the front because you're still locked to the back. So yeah, you want the space, your toes are gonna do the stabilization for the foot and if they're crammed, you're not gonna be able to do the stabilizing and also if you are crammed in a shoe, you're actually increasing your risk of bunnings and stuff, especially if you have a flatter foot because a flat foot with an incorrect shoe fit where you're crammed in a shoe, that's gonna really cause your toe to be misaligned. And that's definitely not a good thing. You want your toes to split actually. And a lot of shoes are finally starting to have a wider toe box to accommodate for a bit more room up there where you want the room. Because shoes in the past have been quite pointy and it's definitely not good because that's not the natural shape of your foot. A lot of people will even take out the insole and then put their foot on it to see if the foot is within that shape. Because if it's not, then it's clearly not the right fit. If you are struggling to lock yourself to the back of the shoe, even though you have the space at the front, then what you want to do is use the extra hole here to make a small loop. Do the same on the other side. Thread the needle across the other side for both. And then do that until it's secure and then tie your shoelaces normally. That adds another layer that will lock you to the back of the shoe. Let's quickly talk about shoe rotation. 
If you're wearing the same shoe every single day, you're compressing the foam and not giving it time to decompress by wearing another shoe and letting your current shoes rest for a bit. The other thing to keep in mind is if you're wearing the same shoe every single day, it's the same thing as going to the gym every single day, doing the exact same exercise and not doing anything else. You're working the same muscles and not doing anything else to kind of even out the load. So wearing different shoes can move where the load goes as we talked about earlier, and it's actually really important. The two main factors that lead to injury in running is not enough strength training and also not enough of a shoe rotation. So even though you probably don't need 30 shoes like I have, it's nice to have a few shoes to rotate through to even out the load. All right, let's talk a bit about shoe measurement. So there's men's US sizing, there's women's US sizing, and the difference between the men's and women's is like 1.5 for Nike and one for other brands. So like a men's nine would be a woman's 10 in most ranks, or in a Nike shoe, a men's nine would be a woman's 10 and a half. Um, and then in terms of width, you have B, which is women's standard, D, which is men's standard, but it's also a women's wide. And then there's 2E, which is a men's wide. And then there's 4E, which is a men's extra wide. Yeah, there's also a women's narrow, which is called 2A, so the range goes from 2A, B, D, 2E, 4E. And generally when you get measured up in like a device called the Brannock or like a machine that kind of measures your foot, you usually want to add half or full size to it. But some shoes fit big, some shoes fit small, so don't focus on the numbers too much. Go with whatever the professional that's fitting you says and yeah, just make sure you got like thumbs with the space because at the end of the day, you can have the correct fit, it doesn't matter what number you are. You could be a US 9.5 in one shoe, you could be a US 10.5 in another shoe, you could be a US 10 in another shoe. So I know that was a lot to take in, but to summarize everything I've said, basically with different shoes you can move where the load goes, but at the end of the day, you want to go for comfort because comfort will tell you that the softness, the ankle support, the lockdown, everything's working well with your foot. So as long as you've got the correct fit and the correct type of shoe, neutral stability, the rest could come down to comfort pretty much. Comfort in a shoe is a good indicator that will work for you in the long term. Yeah, that's what I usually base off of um, when I'm deciding on what shoe to buy. Now I know picking a shoe can be a little stressful sometimes because you're going to be in the shoe for a long time, but if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below and I'll answer them. But yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. And let me know if you like this kind of video because then I can make more of it. But yeah, thank you for watching. Leave a like and I'll see you in the next one.